Hanging out in beautiful Carlsbad, California, near an airport. You might hear some planes going over occasionally, but it's just a wonderful place to test these bikes out. I'm looking at the Gazelle NL, which I think stands for Netherlands. And that's where a lot of people might ride this. This is where it gets tested. It's where it has really risen in popularity. From what I'm told, I haven't actually been to the Netherlands yet, but I love the bike culture that I hear about out there. And we're finally getting some of it over here in the United States. This bike is, is designed for comfort, utility, obviously with these awesome racks and safety. It's something I'm always commenting on. These CST Metropolitan Palm Bay with protective, some sort of lining they must have, e-bike specific. I love the reflective sidewall because from the side you're gonna be able to be seen by cars. And of course the white racks and the chain guard and this thing is like completely enclosed so the chain just stays dry it doesn't get get your pant legs or your skirt dirty when you're pedaling of course back here we have a rack too for a little bit more utility it's also where the battery pack is mounted that's the bosch power pack 400 5.4 pounds on that comes off you can charge it on or off the bike which is really handy i love how they have these integrated bungee straps you can just kind of clip at the bottom and potentially do panniers, but you know, this is, is a little bit fatter than I'm used to seeing. Definitely the top tubing and it's a little tight near the battery. So you might mount something here and keeps that weight lower. The distribution across this frame is actually pretty good even though it has a rear mounted battery. A lot of times I'm like, you know, move it forward and down. That's the best balance. But in this case, you've got a nice step through. It's easier to mount. You're not gonna hit your shins when swinging your leg over the top. The bike comes in a couple of colors. There's this really cool satin blue, maybe like a sky blue, and then a matte black, um, several sizes. It's a little bit more affordable than the Gazelle Arroyo, uh, which is also a step through. That one has the Gazelle switch adjustable angle stem. That's really cool, it's tool free. This one's still adjustable angle, but once you set it, it's kind of it's kind of done. Really nice sweeping handlebars, almost like cruiser bars, really upright and relaxed. 26 inches wide here versus I think it was 23 on the other one. So it's just the whole thing that might give you some more steering control too. You can imagine that you have this rack loaded with gear, 10 kilograms of gear um, that maybe like uh, kind of turns with the steering. Okay. So there are other kinds of racks that mount directly to the frame, the head tube, and they don't turn. And that can be a little confusing when you're riding because you're turning and everything seems like it's staying the same. The alternative is this, it's a little bit easier to mount and stuff, and of course you could take it off if you didn't want it, but sometimes you park and and things tip. So in order to help reduce that potential, you can see there's a special headset here that allows you to kind of lock and keep the thing straight for loading. Brilliant, that's just awesome. I love that. I also love that these aluminum fenders sort of match with that white and everything just looks good. But you might ask yourself like, well, it looks good now, but what about after it gets sun faded and it's gonna turn yellow? I've been told by the Gazelle people that no, we actually test that with UV light and you know we, we basically simulate years of, of sunlight on the thing and, and they pick their, their paints and coatings accordingly so it, it continues to look good. They also do like a, a really intensive salt water, just general wetness test where they dunk the whole bike and try to see you know, what happens? Is it getting uh, rusty? Is it jamming up? Like what, what's going on? And, and that's part of what leads, I think, to some of these innovative um, covers and just the fenders and everything, because in the Netherlands, I guess it rains a little bit more and people ride these more like cars than in the United States, where it's traditionally, it's been more for just pleasure. Love that double leg kickstand, really wide, really stable. Again, helps you load those racks up. Um, just really appreciate those, those extra attention to detail plastic platform pedals with rubber nubs they're okay you know easy to replace if you wanted to integrated cafe lock so you just pull that trigger down and it puts a skewer right through those spokes so no one can easily run off with your bike they'd have to lift the whole thing and given that this thing is 62 and a half pounds that would be you might need a couple people if that was your plan i uh, love the saddle really big and comfortable Celly royale and it's got this fun like Miss Grace, this is not a bike, be happy, Miss Grace lifestyle. Um, I have no idea what that means, but I think it's, I like butterflies, so you've got that. And let's see what else, the integrated lights I wanted to talk about back here. So you can see it says Trelluck on that one. And integrated means they run right off that main battery pack. You don't have to have separate double A's or anything. 
and then Spaninga swing up front. And as you turn, the light's gonna turn, so it's gonna keep the path lit. It's easy to adjust that, kind of angle it down or up, depending on your needs. And then the brakes. Stopping is always an important feature on a bike, especially electric bikes that are heavier. Um, so we've got these beautiful Magura HS11, and they're hydraulic. They've got really big levers, uh, but you don't really have to pull that hard. You can, you can almost do it with one or two fingers because they're hydraulic, and they're rim brakes. Okay, so you can see the pads coming into contact with the rim. So you have lots of surface area to stop with and actually really good leverage, but they could get wet and a little dirtier than disc brakes, which are mounted in closer to the hub. It's a trade-off. Um, you know, I, I think for what they are, they're, they're pretty excellent. They should give you excellent stopping power. And then the one thing that I felt like I didn't see when I was looking at this bike was, you know, there's all these racks, there's all this place to put stuff, but there wasn't bottle cage bosses. And maybe that's because this is a it's kind of a step through and you don't want to fill up that space with things that could clip your shoelace or whatever when you're getting on. But it, it would be nice to see something. And I suppose there are saddlebags that have little cup holders built in or even handlebar um, cup holders, literally, like right there. Th those are actually really fun. Um, sometimes they sell them on Amazon and stuff. Love these kind of a brown, rubbery, organic feel on the ergonomic grips grip twister for the shifting seven speeds shimano nexus and i can shift right now without causing any any harm because it's an internal gearing design these are really durable like if the bike tips over or whatever it's it's not going to get banged up like a derailleur would it's just right there it's it's more sealed off so they're i'm told that they last you know like three times as long between tune-ups as traditional drivetrains they do weigh a little bit more i keep coming back to the weight thing that's the one trade-off with this bike also because this isn't a diamond frame the one i'm looking at there's a little bit more frame flex but they've got a double tubing design so it's actually it's fairly solid and then a special custom interface for that bosch mid-drive motor which is very efficient the bosch system has kind of a shift sensing software driven shift sensing um which i i comment on a lot because when, when you have a derailleur and a chain you don't want it to be like kind of dumb and, and like you're really trying while you're shifting gears in this case because it's an internally geared hub and you've got the shift sensing i, I mean i think it's a brilliant design or rather a combination of uh of features again the battery is locking and removable there's another lock for the um, cafe just be careful when you're pedaling if you leave this in um, see how it's kind of short like that they, i think that's so that you don't snag your pants on it and potentially break that off just be conscious of how you're riding and you can remove that if you feel like you don't need it and you want to reduce the weight i think that's a pretty good roundup of like what's going on with this bike no quick release on the front or rear um even the seat the seat uh tube right here the collar is it's it requires a tool a 27.2 millimeter diameter if you wanted to improve the comfort of this bike you could put a seat post suspension right there um, the Arroyo does have that kind of stock, and it has a suspension fork, whereas this one's just rigid. Um, it works well enough as it is, and I think these tires are a little bit fatter, two inches in diameter. So um, in my experience, it's been riding just fine, and that saddle really helps. It's kind of rubberized and sprung, but if you did want to replace something for comfort, you could do that seat post suspension. Uh, the one that it comes with only goes down to like right here. It's like 200 millimeters. Most seat posts are like 300 or 350. I don't know why, I guess they just wanted to save on weight and materials and they expect people to be really low. I'm an active rider and I like to get like full leg extension. I have these longer legs and so for me it was like that's as high as I could get it. Um, but you know, with assist it works well enough. So let's talk about that. This is the Bosch Active Line Center Drive Motor. It's using Generation 2 technology, 250 watt nominal output. I believe it's something like 60 Newton meters. Actually, it might be lower, a little bit closer to 40 because this is their, it's, it's smoother, kind of a, a more gentle town type of motor setup or orientation than their CX line, which is like 75 Newton meters climbing off road. So it's gonna be more of a battery sipper. It should get you really good range and maybe just not have that look, overwhelming zippy feel. In my experience, it works great, and it still feels very satisfying. Like, I'm, I'm not complaining. People are like, oh, only 250 watts, maybe younger people. And I'm like, eh, it's fine, you know. Pro cyclists put out, like, a couple hundred watts consistently over long-distance races. So if you're taking a pro cyclist and you're putting them on your bike and they're pedaling consistently, that's plenty of power. It's, it's more than enough, in, in my view. 
Again, 36 volt, 11 amp hours for a total of 396 watt hours on the battery. Slightly above average, but it's just applied so well. If you shift gears, you're empowering that motor to be efficient, just like you. Here's the Bosch Intuvia display. It can kind of rock forward and back, and it is removable, which I love, because if you lock the bike up at a bike rack, you know, you, you don't want this to take the sun damage or maybe get bumped or scratched while you're not there. So it clicks on does have a built-in little mini USB charging port on the side. I like that. If you have your phone mounted or an MP3 player, you can kind of sip off the battery just like those lights we were talking about earlier. Okay, so to power it on, press the power switch right here. The thing comes to life, and it's got a few main readouts that stay the same. Five ticks on a battery bar. That's one area. I'd like to see a 10 tick bar or maybe a percentage indication. This is 20% increments, just it's not as fine as I'd personally like, but it's okay miles per hour in the middle, real big. You can change that to kilometers per hour if you want. And then four levels of assist and a power bar thing. And there's even like a shift sensing sort of, I guess it's shift recommendation where there's arrows that say shift up, shift down. And I, I think that's a little unnecessary. Um, not everyone wants to shift at the same time. I like to spin personally. And so the arrow, it's just a waste of space when they could have had a battery bar thing that was a little more accurate uh, or precise rather. And then down here, we have all these other cool readouts. You press the I here or over here more conveniently to shift through them. So we've got trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and then range is really cool. As you change assist level, right now we have no assist. As I arrow up to eco, it says, hey, 44 miles. Now consider that this is not even full. It's not even a full battery and it's estimating 44 miles. That estimate is dynamic. It's based on the weight of the rider plus the bike, the hills that you're on, the wind. There's so many factors, but you should seriously be able to get like 60 miles on this in, in ideal conditions on flat paved surfaces. It's pretty awesome for one charge for a battery pack that's like kind of average sized. I like that. And then I think we've got an odometer. So those are the, those are the other things. I'm gonna start out on Eco. You can hear this motor a little bit, especially at higher RPM, but it's, you know, you, it kind of gets canceled out by just the sound of the tires and the wind and stuff. It's it's not super loud, but it's more pronounced than the Bros motor or some of the Impulse motors at times. I like it though, it's my favorite because it's a little more zippy and it actually feels like an electric bike, not just a gentle assist. So yeah, here we go. Oh, and before we go, I mentioned the, the grip shifter over here check this out there's another little shifty thing it's a little bell i like that a lot it's like so cool it's really symmetrical it's this a thing of beauty like this is the more affordable more like luggage oriented bike without the suspension with it and it is heavy and it still costs a, a decent amount i mean you're saving 300 dollars ish over the arroyo but you're still above the the three grand mark so you know you want it to last and i feel like it, it would the way that it's set up, there we go. I'll go off the curb here and you can kind of see it. Oh boy, see it shake around a little bit, but the fenders are pretty pretty solid. They weren't rattling a whole lot. Okay, I'm gonna shift down at standstill. It's my favorite thing. Start pedaling. Real quiet and smooth. Real easy to ride right now. Nice and comfortable body position too, upright. Go ahead and shift, shift gears. This thing does use a combination of pedal cadence, wheel speed and pedal torque to determine when and how much power to put out. So it's very responsive, it's very smart. Okay, I'm gonna change levels. Now I'm up in turbo mode. tires feel really comfortable to me kind of floaty the bike has you know just this nice relaxed feeling but it, it is a little heavier so it has its own momentum um, and maybe it's just the big steering design right here where the bars are way back towards me yeah it's something a little bit different almost like a I want to say like a beach cruiser I might actually classify it a little bit like that just the way that the ergonomics of it are I think that's about it 
Uh, that's the Gazelle NL for the full write up on this, including some standover height measurements and other details. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. If you've got one of these and you've got some tips on how to use the racks or other things I missed, feel free to chime in and help me out. And I'll see you next time. Of course, ride safe.